KTV. Into the up down report as our 50 burning questions continue. Let's hear from you guys on Twitter. Hashtag the starters. Thumbs up or thumbs down with these ones, guys. First one here in the up down report. Is LeBron still the best player in the NBA? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Everybody's yeah. still doing it. We're still doing it. Yeah, no one's better than him, are they? There's a lot of really <laughs> yeah. good players in this league, but if you were to have one player to pick, everyone would still pick LeBron. He won't be forever. He's probably only got another year or two left with this title. But for right now, he's definitely still the best player. You can't make a case for a Durant you can or make a Giannis case, or an Anthony You can Davis. make a case, for sure. I think Lee makes a good point. If you're talking about one game, you're definitely picking LeBron. We just saw playoff LeBron literally dominate the entire playoffs. Yeah. I think he averaged 100 points a game and hit 16 <laughs> game winners. That may be off, but... In the regular season, he picks his spot. So I think you can make a case in that in that scenario for Kevin Durant being the best player in the game. He can do everything that LeBron can do. He just doesn't necessarily have to do it as much. Over the course of a season, maybe Kevin Durant is the better player uh, just for a full 82 games. But if you're talking one game, you want LeBron. Agreed, yeah. Kevin Durant um, might have the better season this year in terms of numbers. LeBron's numbers might take a, a step down a little bit with everybody else handling the ball. But uh, LeBron in a playoff series, you take him. Uh, he takes off possessions throughout the league. I think KD offers a little bit more defensively. And this might be the last year that you give him the title because he is four years older than Kevin Durant. Right. There, it will happen at some point. LeBron <laughs> will get old at some point, but doubting him now is just pointless. Okay. Next one here, guys. Are you up or down on the New York Knicks making the playoffs? <laughs> Are they getting back into the no, dance? No. Whoa, wow, everybody going down, even in the Eastern Conference. Mm. If they had Chris Depp's Porzingis for the whole season, yeah. I think they're definitely in the mix, but he is their best player, and he's the future of their franchise, and clearly he's their biggest concern. There's talks about him coming back maybe in February, but even then doesn't seem to be set in stone. Right. They're taking their time with Chris Depp. They got their draft pick next year. It behooves them to be bad this season. Yeah. So no rush. But you're saying, you're saying if Porzingis was there on opening night, then maybe you could you know, talk yourself into oh, it. I, I can definitely talk myself yeah. into it. Uh, would it happen? I don't know. But he was the Knicks were a lot better when he was on yeah. the 17th in defense when he was off the court 30th. Is that easy? Yeah, not only that, when he does come back, he's probably going to take a little bit of time to get back. But I actually like the move of Dave Fisdale as their head coach. I think he's the right coach for this team. So it's going to be a tough year, but the Knicks do sort of have some, uh, like the, the horizon is brighter, especially with young rookie Kevin Knox coming along. I think he's going to be a good player. So it's going to take some time, but the Knicks are at least not, 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 like, not as bad as they've been in years gone by anyway. Yeah, I don't think there's a chance with Chris Stapp sporting us out, and they want to keep Chris Stapp sporting us out. I think they understand right. we got to be bad. They finally said for the first time, we're not trading our draft picks. <laughs> and do GMs ever say that? I think this is like a first. <laughs> they, they literally come, came out and said, we know that you, know, you can pick holes in our 18-year past, the last 18 years, but we're not doing it this year. It's not going to happen. They understand. <laughs> Let's be bad. So right. I, I think they want to be bad. Yeah, that's possible. Chris Stapp should sit out until March, April. Take it, take as much time as possible. Well, that will be interesting to watch, I think. How are the Knicks flirting with 500 somehow when mm. the idea of Porzingis could come back and do they want him back and trying to get into the playoffs? Or are they horrible, can't rack up the wins, it's all about development for your young guys and Robinson and Knox and, and, and Frankie Smokes? And do they just say, you know what, no rush at all with KP? I think both of those are in play. It just depends sort of on their record when we get to around the All-Star break when they're hoping he might be able to come back. Frankie Smokes. I love calling him Frankie Smokes. <laughs> all right, next one here. Are you up or down on James Harden repeating as the NBA scoring champ? I think I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. Down, down. Trey says, why not? Uh, exactly. Why not? He's still <laughs> in his prime. He's the MVP. He led the league in scoring. The system hasn't changed. He's still going to have the ball in his hands all the time. They lost a little bit of scoring. Uh, the Rockets did in Trevor Reza and Luke Mbaa Mute. That's 20 points. Surely Carmelo Anthony will take a couple of those, but yeah. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Harden puts up 30 a game again this season. No. That is incredible. Nobody can guard him. Yeah, no, I think he can easily get to 30 a game. I think Anthony Davis, though, might be this year where he decides to take over. He was pretty close there last year. He was fantastic in the playoffs. So I think maybe that uh, Anthony Davis just sort of puts his stamp on the league this year and, and, and gets that scoring title. But who knows? I mean, in Houston, even though they've added Carmelo, I, I agree that it might not actually affect right. or impact James Harden's offensive game in a negative way at all. Harden has won everything now other than the in the postseason. So I think he realizes I, I got to lay off a little bit because he, he gets gassed in the postseason each and every yeah. year. So I think his numbers will fall a little bit. And that doesn't... Uh, bode well for, you know, plus 30, I think, you know, 26, 27, which is plenty for yeah. them. Uh, they'll be fine offensively without him scoring a ton. I think Giannis' season 
starts now. I think this could be his MVP season uh, with Mike Budenholzer. That is their big offseason acquisition. Mike Budenholzer, the Bucks head coach, right. I think will unlock Giannis a little bit. It, it's funny to say Giannis was locked and not you know, a great version of himself last year because he had 27 points per game. Um, but I think this year you'll see more movement. You'll see more freedom with that Bucks offense, and Giannis will score a ton. I think he could be 30-plus. Those are two solid picks in Giannis. Anthony Davis maybe hardened again. Let's hear from you guys on Twitter. Hashtag the starters. One more here in the up-down report. This is a fun one. Up or down on Tony Parker looking the weirdest in his new uniform more than anyone else in the league. Yes. Thumbs up, thumbs up, and thumbs up. There are some strange ones, but yeah. Tony Parker, because he played so long I thought with he the Spurs, Spurs now he's in a yeah. Hornets uniform. I just couldn't believe he actually left the San Antonio organization <laughs> because, honestly, I thought they were going to just change the rules for him and say, whatever you want to stay, Tim and Tony and Manu and those guys would just stay Spurs for life. So seeing him in Charlotte is very, very <laughs> yeah, he's weird. He's also going from black and silver yeah. to white, teal, and purple. It's mm. such a huge change. Also give a quick shout-out, though, to DeMar DeRozan. I was shocked seeing him playing in his first preseason game with the Spurs wearing number 10. I think that's the big thing to me is that Dennis Rodman is always going to be the Spurs <laughs> number 10. And DeMar DeRozan, he doesn't have green hair, mm. I've noticed. Uh, sort of a similar thing to wearing the red uniforms with the Raptors. Now he's going monochromatic and white and black. That threw me off. Mm. You ultimately go in with uh, Tony Parker being I, the weirdest, though? I agree with the Spurs because they are neutral colors. Mm -hmm. Anytime you change jerseys, it's, it's, it's louder <laughs> it right. pops. Than, than, than white, gray, or, or black, right. or camouflage gray. <laughs> well, let's hear from you guys again. Jump on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Who looks weirdest in their new NBA uniform? What about Melo? Melo in the Rockets? Uh, not a big deal because he's played on a couple teams yeah, in the last couple yeah, years. Yeah, he spots with those guys as well, you know. So. <laughs> okay. Which, Didn't take that uh, into consideration. Uh, he's friends. Yeah. My bad. All right, when we come back, we will step into the crossfire. Tass versus Trey. They're going to debate, or at least try and build, the perfect NBA dunk contest field. Come get it. At least get it started. Don't go anywhere. Crossfire, here's how this bad boy works. The champ will take on the challenger in three rounds of questions, and at the end of it all, I'll declare a winner. As always, the Crossfire belt is on the line. Ready, gentlemen? Here we go. First question, number 18 overall. It's another award prediction. Who do you have winning Coach of the Year? Here we go. I've got the Bucks, Mike Budenholzer. He is Milwaukee's big offseason pickup, and he picked Milwaukee over Toronto because he wants to unleash the Greek and I think he's going to surround him with shooters so it was sort of like he did in Atlanta Ursan Ilyasova was a guy he had high on his list he went and got him he got Brooke Lopez he hasn't had a good team to coach in a couple of years I'm going Mike Mike won it a few years ago I'm going with Quinn Snyder perhaps the Mike Budenholzer of the Western Conference I see the Jazz <laughs> in the mix for a top four seed out west and despite the fact that they have the Defensive Player of the Year, and Donovan Mitchell. They're kind of considered a starless team, and when that's the case, the coach gets a whole bunch of credit. Quinn Snyder gets a lot out of role players like Royce O'Neal. Jay Crowder was better when he got to Utah. So I can see uh, Quinn Snyder putting together a Budenholzer 2015 sort of case out west with the Jazzies. Oh, we got a Bud and we got a Quinn. Mm -hmm. Nice start here. <laughs> that's All right. right. <laughs> Next one is a starter's classic, because we need your help in building the ideal NBA dunk contest. Who is your one must-invite dunker? Here we go. You know, a big guy is going to win the dunk contest again someday, and that's why I'm inviting the Atlanta Hawks, John Collins. He's a great jumper, he's got a great personality, and he's not so big that it doesn't look like he's jumping high. He still looks like he's flying through the air. He's yep. a slender yep. guy. The other thing I like about this is if we get John Collins in the dunk contest, maybe he'll get some advice from the greatest dunker of all time, Vince Carter. Imagine those conversations out on the court. Imagine John Collins jumping over Vince Carter or somehow dunking Vince Carter. I don't know if it's Ooh, possible. Oh. Let's see. Okay, we All, got All-Star game in Charlotte this year. I'm going with Charlotte's Miles Bridges. He's shown in the preseason. He's got some ups. He's shown some great stuff. Now, he doesn't have a lot of dunks. He, he's not extremely versatile looking back at his Michigan State days, but I like that. I don't like a guy who's got a lot of dunks and just waits for the second round. That's a huge mistake for dunkers. Less dunks is better. Bring it in the first couple dunks. Nothing worse than an arena that gets the air okay. sucked You're out right. of it. Plus, Rich true, Paul is his true. agent. That helps. Okay, all right. All right, all right. Here we go. Final one. You guys are the new four pins, all right? I want to know what will be the season's biggest fashion trend. Here we go. We're talking fits. All right. Yeah. Uh, I think a trend that's been happening in the NBA is a lot of accessorizing, uh, a lot of bracelets, necklaces, yeah. uh, fitted clothing. I think we're going to keep it simple. 
loose Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> and I had I actually made this pick before I saw the Clippers coaches they look pull great. them out. That's good luck. I thought I thought to myself, uh, coaches are doing it. It's not going to happen, but they're still pretty cool. Well, you mentioned fitted clothing, Tass. Off the court, things are getting baggier and weirder in the pants region. I'd like to see that be the case on court as well. Give me some TJ Ford gigantic shorts. I want to wow. wonder how you even dribble through your legs. This is what it was like in the early 2000s. You didn't see anybody's kneecaps. Let's bring that back. I'm out on kneecaps. Good battle, good crossfire battle. But in the end, I got to give it to my man, Trey Kirby, Ooh. because I used to dress like TJ Ford when that's I was right, in high school. Right. Big belts, big shorts. <laughs> All right. TK gets the win. Lots more still to come. Back in a second.